little girl runs for her life, for freedom. She escapes a temple house where girls are enslaved, forced to live lives of immorality. It is a cruel practice that has since been outlawed, but at the turn of the 20th century, no one knows its horrors more than seven-year-old Prina. As Prina runs, she remembers previous attempts, her capture, and the awful tortures. This time, Prina will not be caught. Her escape is one of the first successful ones in South India. The little girl begs a village woman to take her to an Irish Christian missionary. Her name is Amy Carmichael. I was sitting in the veranda. When she saw me, she ran straight up to me. My name is Prina, the child began, and I want to stay here always. I have come to stay. In her native tongue of Tamil, Prina calls Amy Carmichael Amma, the Tamil word for mother. Amy, Amma, Prina will be her first child. Amma will be her name forever. Over the next 50 years, Amy will be Amma to thousands of Indian children. Even today, more than 50 years after her death, Amma's children remember. She was a mother of every nation. She was a good mother. She was very soft with us. Very, very kind, gentle with the old one, older ones and the younger ones. She loves everybody. Very loving and kind. And mother is a mother. Amma's children and the following generations live on roughly 170 acres, 30 miles from the southernmost tip of India. It is called the Donovur Fellowship. Donovur Fellowship is very much a family built up of girls and boys that were brought or saved from moral danger, from being given to temples, those who have lost parents and left destitute. It is a sanctuary and an oasis. From the sandy red clay, plants and trees flourish. Their limbs often filled with children, the air filled with laughter and play. When this fellowship was being shaped, an old man asked me, we have heard much preaching can you show us the life of your Lord Jesus? At Donavur, the sick are treated. Babies nurtured. The elderly cared for. It is a remarkable enclave of living Christianity, primarily run by women. So miraculous, it begs the question, how did all this come to be? We have been asked to tell of the beginning of our fellowship, why it shaped as it did and how it came to be a little thing committed to the hand of God. If only I can tell it under direction, it will carry at least one quality of clear running water, sincerity. The story of Amy Carmichael and of the Donovoir Fellowship bears witness to the faithfulness of God. From the beginning of her work in Ireland with the creation of the welcome, to the ongoing work at Donovoir Fellowship, this much is known. God has supplied every need in answer to prayer. So the question what to do never rose. Our Father knew what things we had need of before we asked him, and yet he wished us to ask. And also, it was enough to ask him. We had proved this then. We have proved it ever since. We have found this a happy way to live. It may sound precarious, and yet not a bill has been unpaid nor a real need unmet, but it does mean careful walking and the choice always of self-denial rather than self-indulgence.